everybody and welcome to the vlog. <laughs> Today when you're seeing this is January 1st and I know a lot of you are going to be starting New Year's resolutions to go to the gym. So I wanted to do a full week of beginner's workouts. You can do these at home. All you're going to need is like dumbbells, no machines. So yeah, I'll go into heavy detail through each day, but you're going to be following my exact workout split, just a beginner edition. And you can always Take out days if you want, switch up things, literally whatever you want, so customizable. You don't have to go in the same order I do, but yeah, so I'm just going to share with you guys some workouts. If you're not already, make sure that you subscribe, leave a like, and drop a comment down below. Let's get into the video. Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog from the voiceover. So we are doing a full week of beginners workouts. Day one is glutes and hamstrings. This is what my first day of my workouts looks like. So we are going to start with some dynamic stretching and I'm sure most of you don't know what dynamic stretching is, but dynamic stretching are movements performed at a slower pace and you're basically just doing some active stretching, getting your muscles ready, warmed up, using your full range of motion. So this stretch was stretching my hamstrings right at my hip flexors. And then now we're moving into some side to side lunges. You're just gonna wanna go nice, slow, and controlled. This stretches out like my ankle mobility as well. But basically we're just getting everything warmed up and ready to go for our workout if this part is too hard you can always put your hands on the ground i do have a couple of modifications for different things but yeah when i was a beginner i thought that i was just supposed to do regular stretching which is called static stretching where you're basically just holding a position like you're holding a split or whatever you want to call it but you want to move because when you're doing static stretching, staying in the same place, your muscles actually relax. So that is not good for your workouts. You want to do these little warm up movements. This one is like a frogger into, I don't know, a leg extension, a toe touch, whatever you want to call it. But again, we're really, really stretching out our hips and hamstrings. Those are two of my tightest points on my bodies at all time. And then we're gonna do these. You can call them 90-90 rotations, windshield wipers. There's no specific name for a lot of these and I don't do any certain amount of reps. I just do it until it feels good. But this is just stretching out your hips again and when you lean in like that, it stretches out your glutes and your hips as well. You just wanna go slow and controlled. I also stretch out my back on upper body and lower body days just because my back is so tight. No matter what, I did competitive cheerleading, gymnastics, so I have a very irritable back, I guess you would say. It's just always tight and needs to be cracked and stretched, so you get the point. But now that our body is all warmed up and we are ready to go, we are going to start with squats. I hold the dumbbells on my shoulders just because this kind of puts the weight towards the back, which is where I want it right now. I'm sorry, you can't really see, but my feet are shoulder width apart and we're just gonna push our glutes back. This is more of like a glute focused squat because I'm doing glutes and hamstrings. But if you can't go that low, that is completely okay. Just go slow and controlled. You're gonna wanna keep your core tight and braced. So basically you're just gonna suck your belly button towards your spine and kind of squeeze it. This is gonna help you so much with stability, but we're doing three sets of 10 reps. And then for the best glute exercise ever that's gonna grow your glutes, RDLs, these are Romanian deadlifts, but it is a hip hinge movement. You're going to pretend like there is a door behind your butt and you're trying to shut it with your butt. Um, so yeah, you're just gonna push your hips backwards, keep your knees slightly bent. This again is a glute focused movement. There is another way to do RDLs, but 
For this day, for this workout, we are doing glute focused and you're just gonna go slow and controlled. You do not need to bring the dumbbells all the way to the ground. But again, I did four sets of eight reps. And now we are moving into reverse lunges. I had to take my shoes off because I didn't wanna crease my shoes, but I was literally sliding so much. You're basically just gonna do a reverse lunge. Keep your weight on the front foot. You're gonna keep it towards your heel and that's what you're gonna use as your momentum to push yourself back up. And we are going to do three sets of eight reps. And when I say eight reps, I mean eight reps on each side for these single leg movements. Now you're going to want to grab a mat and lay yourself on the ground, keep your back flat, and then you're gonna move your feet up so that they are parallel with your knees. Um, basically, when you go up in here, you want to engage your core, again, squeezing those ab muscles, sucking your belly button to your spine, and you're gonna squeeze your glutes at the top of the movement. This is gonna work on the top of your glutes. Girls, I know you wanna grow that booty, so this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do three sets of 10 slow, steady reps. And then on the last rep, you're gonna hold it there for 10 seconds. I know it's hard. Push yourself. If you can't hold it for 10 seconds, that is completely okay. Do not stress about it. You will get there, but if you can't do the 10 seconds, just hold it as long as possible. If you've seen people do hip thrusts, this is essentially another form, just less range of motion. So that's why I included it instead of hip thrust for this beginner workout. And then once we're done with this, we're gonna move into our Last exercise, you can use a stool like this. This one was too tall, but my shorter one, well, not my shorter one, my gym shorter one was being taken up. You can also use a chair or anything if you wanna do this workout at home, you totally can. But basically, you're going to keep your working foot. That is gonna hold all of your weight and that is gonna be what's pushing you up. Your working foot is the one that's on the stool. So when you come down, slowly lower yourself and you're not gonna push off of the bottom foot off the ground, if you can see. And we're gonna do three sets of eight reps on each side. Now we are moving into upper body. Today is going to be a back and biceps focused. We're also gonna hit a little bit of rear delts, which that's the back of your shoulders but this is called a pull day. So we're doing all of the motions that you do to pull things towards you. So that's gonna include your biceps, your back, rows, curls. Those are a couple examples. But anyway, we are starting with another dynamic warm up. I just take this little pull thing. There's probably a name for it. I don't know what it is. And I just rotate my shoulders. I do these with each side and then I do it behind and forwards. We're really just stretching out our shoulders. I know they can get tight, but they're important even though we're not directly hitting them. And then once I am done doing this, I kind of just hold the pole behind me and kind of just like pulse it there. It really helps stretch out my chest a lot as well when I do this motion. Then we are going to use a band and we're just gonna do some pulls. These are gonna help with your back, your lats, all of that. Here's a forward look and a backwards look. Again, we're not doing any sets or reps. There's just going until you feel like you're stretched out. Um, and then I take a weight. You can just do regular arm swings if you want, but I like to use a little bit of weight just to get myself warmed up. Again, just rotating my shoulders, stretching them out to make sure that we are ready when it comes time for the workout. Now that our muscles are all warmed up, we're going to move into our first exercise. And I apologize about the lighting for this video. It was kind of like a more gloomy day and the lighting was just so terrible. So I really apologize about that. But we're going to start with single arm rows. We're gonna do three sets of 10 reps. 10 reps on each side. Basically, you're just going to be a little bit bent over and taking the weight, holding it on your side and using your elbow and your back muscles to pull the weight towards you. 
Once we're done with that, we are going to go into underhand rows. So basically, you're gonna take your palms and flip them so that they are facing the ceiling. And then you're gonna row back. We're doing four sets of 10, and this is gonna be with both dumbbells at the same time. I did a front view and a side view. You're just going to slightly bend over, keep those core engaged engage all of your back muscles and go slow and steady nice and controlled to work on our biceps we are going to do some bicep curls these ones are going to be at the same time we're going to do three sets of 10 reps and you don't want to swing yourself so use a weight that you can just use your arms you do not want to use any force from your body your whole body is still the only thing that is moving is your arms you are bending at the elbows and just pulling the weight up towards your shoulders we do not want to use our momentum for this because that is not going to work your biceps but once we're done with that we're going to hit some rear delts which that is the back of your shoulders and we're going to do bent over rear delt flies you're going to hold your arms at a 45 degree angle hold the the weights excuse me Hold the weight in front of you and then you're just gonna pretend like you're opening your arms up to give somebody a hug and squeeze those back muscles together. We're doing three sets of 12 reps for this exercise. And for our last and final exercise of this back and biceps day, we're doing a hammer curl. So we're gonna do three sets of eight reps. We're alternating. We're alternating sides and you're just gonna have a neutral grip and again, doing that same motion making sure that you're not using your momentum, but we're gonna do 16 reps total, eight on each side, and you're gonna do it for three reps. And by now, your arm should be pretty toasted, so that is gonna be it for the back and biceps today. Day three is going to be our cardio and core day. Don't worry, we are not doing any kind of running or sprinting or even using the Stairmaster, it's literally just all on the treadmill. It's something light, something that beginners should be able to do. Even if you can't, that's okay. You can always modify everything, but it is no kind of crazy cardio. I'm just stretching out my upper body and my lower body. I was doing a functional full body workout today, but even when I do cardio, I make sure that my legs are really stretched out. Um, but yeah, I was just doing my same warm-up that I did for my upper body and then I did the same thing for my lower body just stretching out my hips and I don't think I recorded it but when I do cardio I like to also focus on stretching out my calves because when I do incline walking or sprinting my calves get so tight I think that also could be the fact that I like to kind of run on my toes a little bit um but yeah I don't really know what I was doing right here. I think I was just kind of like checking myself out, making sure that I was in frame, but I didn't do these on my other leg day. I am just opening the gate. Basically, you're just rotating your leg to help open your hips. Every single time that I do it on my right side, my hip likes to pop, but yeah. So we're stretching out the lower body, getting her warmed up so that we can do some cardio. Now we're gonna move into some more of these lunges. These are some of my favorites. Sometimes they suck, sometimes they're not so bad, but they really stretch out my glutes and hamstrings, so I love them. And on this day, I was having a lot of back pain from when I did deadlifts and glutes workouts the days before. Um, so I took a foam roller. A foam roller is basically a roll of foam and you just use it to stretch out your back and you can roll out your legs but i was using it to focus on my back and my upper lats it literally feels so good but it like hurts in the best way possible it's kind of painful but it also relieves your muscles and soreness and now my back feels 10 times better if you want to purchase this it is on my amazon storefront i believe it's under gym but that's where I got it. They're pretty cheap, about 15-ish dollars. They are super, super helpful for muscle recovery when you're doing rest days or just like active recovery. It is so nice. And even just to stretch it out before your workouts, I promise you, like you'll literally be addicted. But once we were finally done with the dynamic warm-up, we are moving into our cardio. So we're gonna start with a warm-up we're gonna do five minutes of regular walking. 
the speeds really depend on your body. I'm very short and my legs move slow. Like my stride is so tiny. I walk so much slower than everybody. So I do it at speed 2.7. I can go to three, but it's completely up to you. Then we are going to keep the speed at three. I moved my speed up to three and you're gonna do an incline of eight. This should get your heart pumping, your blood flowing. We're putting in the work. Um, it's nothing too crazy. You're not gonna have a crazy heart rate. If you do, you can always lower the incline, lower the speed again. These are totally, totally customizable to you. But once we finish those five minutes, everything is in an increment of five minutes. We are going to turn the speed down to 2.8 and then move the incline up to 10. This should raise your heart rate just a little more. This is the high, highest incline that we're going to go because I know inclines can be super tiring, super hard. They work your legs and give you a little leg workout, but they're so good for steady state cardio. And if you don't wanna move the incline and the speed, you don't have to. You can leave the incline at eight, you can leave it at 10, you can leave your speed, but I just wanted to make it a little more interesting, a little more fun for you guys who are trying out this cardio routine. I was talking too much and forgot to tell you that I moved the speed to three and I was walking at an incline of eight. And then we're gonna move the incline down to five, keep the speed at three. And once we're done with this, we're just gonna do a little cool down walk, a nice five minutes, getting your heart rate back to normal. And we're just gonna walk at zero incline and at a speed of again, 2.7 to three, whatever you wanna do. I also apologize about the audio. My grandma's washing dishes next door and I definitely just heard it when I played back the last voiceover. I also don't have a microphone, so that's that but hopefully we'll upgrade to a microphone soon so that i can get some better audio when i'm doing these voiceovers because i'm doing them all the time but now we're going to go into some core we're doing toe taps basically you're just gonna hold your feet raise them and put them at a 90 degree angle i was trying to figure out where i wanted to put my hands we're just gonna leave them on our sides but you're just gonna lower one leg at a time and tap your foot on the ground and then bring it back up, alternating each side for three sets of 20 reps. So you're gonna do 10 reps on each side. Bracing your core, you wanna keep your back flat on the ground, suck your belly button into your spine, and squeeze your ab muscles. This seems like it's not doing anything, but once you get about halfway, I promise it burns so bad. This works more of like your core stabilizers, which will also help with your lifts, you shouldn't be feeling this in your hips. If you're using too much of your legs, you'll feel it around your hip area. So try and use your lower abs to pull your feet up. Just go nice and slow and controlled. You can always take breaks if you need to. But once we're done with that, we're going to go into some crunches. Crunches are basically like half a sit up, but you wanna exhale when you crunch like that and inhale when you're leaning back we're gonna do three sets of 15 reps this is working again our core our abs more of the upper side but you can do it slow and controlled your feet are gonna be up just sitting right below your butt and i keep my hands at my head like right around my ponytail area but you do not want to be using your hands to pull your head up you just want to be using your core and your ab muscles. Now we're moving on to leg raises. We're doing three sets of 10 reps and I know these can be hard for some people so I also included a modification but this is using a lot of your lower ab muscles. Again, you don't wanna use momentum. You don't wanna swing your legs. Here is the modification. You can just bend your legs. You're kind of gonna do it more of like an in and out movement but this is the modification that I think is closest to the leg raises. You can do either one, whichever you feel most comfortable with. And then we are going to finish off with a plank. We're gonna do three sets holding as long as possible. This is gonna work on your whole core, keeping all of the stability. 
And doing a lot of planks honestly helps me so much with my lifts. Here's a modification you can go up on your arms. I find it easier when I'm up on my hands rather than being down on my elbows, but that is the last exercise for this workout. Today is another upper body day. We're doing chest, triceps, and shoulders, also known as a push day. I wanted to include this little clip of how to adjust the bench, but we're basically gonna have the bench at a 40 to 60 degree angle and we're going to do incline chest press as you can see my back is on the bench you're going to have it a little bit arched and you're going to hold the dumbbells up in front of you slowly bringing them down towards your chest and with this you do not want your arms to be straight out you don't want them to be in a t-shape you're going to keep your elbows more 45 degree angle again you're going to notice that pattern a lot when it comes to chest tricep shoulder workouts but once we're done with that we're going to do a seated shoulder press and a lot of people like to do the shoulder press with the seat straight up but it's actually more effective if you do it with this little 45 degree angle and again you're going to start with the dumbbells up above your head slowly bring them down to your shoulders we're sitting up so we're just gonna keep them at a 45 degree angle again. Some people bring them more back, um, but it is actually better for you to keep them at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna do three sets of 10 reps. Now we're gonna put the bench back to the 45 degree angle and we're gonna do chest flies, dumbbell chest flies. This is working your chest obviously, but you're basically gonna hold the dumbbells in front of your face open your arms out like you're giving somebody a hug and then close them back like you are wrapping your arms around them and I'm so sorry that you can hear my dog barking she needs to go outside but you're going to keep your arms again at a 45 degree angle a slight bend in your elbows and you're going to do three sets of 12 reps and then to work the triceps this is probably one of my least favorite movements. I do a lot of tricep work on the cable machine, but I wanted to do everything dumbbells for all of my beginner people. We're doing skull crushers, four sets of 10 reps. You just wanna bend at your elbows and the weight is gonna go above your head and then it's gonna go behind you and you just wanna keep your arms stable, try and keep them as steady as possible. It is kind of difficult and I kept smacking the weight off of the bench when we're doing the shoulder presses and the chest presses it also does work your triceps so I only included one tricep movement and then our final exercise is lateral raises this is the best movement for shoulder growth I promise you but you're gonna gonna want to oh my gosh I can't even speak you're going to want to go super light in weight um, I literally don't even use that much weight because these are so hard when you do them with proper form But basically you're gonna keep your arms. You're not gonna go straight out in a T They're gonna be kind of in front of you Keep your hands turned around a 45 degree angle and you're gonna use just your shoulders to keep these up And you're gonna do as many reps as possible For our last day of the week we are doing quads and calves and we're gonna start off with a goblet squat. Again, I'm so sorry that you can't see, but my feet are at a closer stance. They're just a little bit closer than shoulder width apart. This is gonna put more emphasis on your quads. You're just gonna use one dumbbell and you're gonna hold it up right around your chin, um, keeping your body, your upper body leaned forward and you're gonna go slow and controlled. We're doing four sets of 10 reps of this exercise. It's another squat variation. And now we're gonna do alternating forward lunges. When I was doing these, I was like, oh my gosh, these are so hard. You can also do walking lunges if that's easier for you. I wasn't sure if people are more comfortable just doing these forward lunges or walking lunges. So I just included these but you're gonna do three sets of 16 reps, slow and controlled. This is really gonna have your quads burning, but you're gonna keep your core braced. Again, suck your belly button to your spine. You guys should know this by now. Um, we're doing eight reps on each side. I honestly don't know if this was even 16 reps. I felt like I was stuck on like 12 reps for a long time. So hopefully I actually did just 16 reps, but who knows? I'm not gonna take the time to count it. 
And once we're done with these lunges, we are moving into another squat variation. This is the same squat that we did on our first leg day. You're gonna hold the weights right on your shoulders, keep the weight towards your back, go nice, slow and controlled, brace your core, put your glutes out, and you don't have to go too low if you can't, just go as low as you can. I am keeping my feet at shoulder width apart, and there was my friend Lily in the background. She was actually filming something for her workouts too, so go check her out. But we're doing four sets of 10 reps. My legs were on fire, especially because I just murdered them in the, them in the gym myself doing my own quads and calf workout. But we are going to go into some calf raises. You can do these weighted or non-weighted if you want. Basically, you're just going to put your heels on the ground and then put the weight towards your toes. I don't know. This is like so hard to explain. I feel like I'm really bad at explaining it, but you want to go slow and controlled. When you do these movements slow, it works your muscles so much more and you're not using momentum. So always go slow and controlled. We're doing three sets of 12 reps. And for our last and final exercise, of the day and of this video, we are doing lateral lunges. I couldn't tell you the last time I did lateral lunges, but I wanted to include a, another body weight exercise for the legs. You're basically just stepping out to the side, pushing your hips back and lunging, and you're gonna do three sets of eight reps on each side. Again, slow and controlled, do it as best as you can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the full week of beginner workouts. I tried to explain it as best as I can. Again, you don't have to go that many days. You can switch it up, interchange things, whatever you wanna do, it's so customizable. But if you like the video, make sure that you drop a like and leave a comment down below of what you wanna see next. And make sure that you subscribe. I'll see you next time.